Hi guys, it's Sherry. Today we are gonna be working with some sliced agate. And I got this piece a while back and I wasn't sure what I want to do with it, but I finally decided I wanna make a pin with this. Now I'm gonna kind of replicate something that I did a few years back. I made a pin, it initially was a pendant, but the lady wanted me to make it into a pin and it was really, really pretty. And I just want to show you how I did it because I really liked it a lot. So the first thing you're gonna do is just get your agate. You're gonna lay it on your clay. And then as I always do, cut around that and get rid of this. Now all this is scrap clay. It's rolled out to my thickest setting on my pasta machine. If you do not have a pasta machine, that is about the thickness you are gonna want. So you'll see that's about how much I need right now, okay? And then I'm just gonna kind of pull this up a little bit on the one side. I'm not gluing this down and I am using white on the bottom because I want this to be able to really show. If I put black, I'm gonna show you real quick. If I put black behind here, it takes away all the beautiful look of that. But if you take the white, now you get to see all those beautiful greens. So you really gotta be careful on what color you're gonna put underneath your agate. It's fine whatever's around it. So grab any clay that you want to go around it, but be careful on what you're putting underneath it. I really, really recommend white clay underneath just so you get all the beautiful colors to truly show through. Next, I got this um, mold off of Amazon probably about three years ago. I'm sure they still have it. I'll look, if I can find it, I'll link it for you. I am gonna use the small, um, I am gonna use the small owl here. So I'm just gonna get my black clay and make sure it's nice and soft. Now I did condition this ahead of time. And I wanna make sure that this is um, nice and slim. I don't want this to go over my mold. I wanna keep this nice and skinny. So push that through or push that into there. Make sure you're getting all those little um, nooks and crannies in there. So if you have a mold that the ears are kind of closed up, make sure you're pushing that clay in there. Now you'll see I kind of went over. So I'm gonna take my flexible blade and then I will just shave up what's on top and get rid of all that extra. And be careful you don't cut your mold. And I'm gonna re-push it in there. And then pop this little guy out. I'm gonna smooth them up a bit. Oops. And kind of give me an idea how I wanna put him. Now I don't wanna cover up this part here because I really like that. So I think I may end up putting him on the top. About right there is where I'm thinking. And then I'm gonna take some of my black clay and I'm only using the different colors because I wanna show you what I'm doing. And if I'm using the same color on everything, it kind of makes it a little bit hard to see. So I'm gonna push and you saw how I left that flat. Don't push that over, leave it flat because you need an area to put your um, your owl. So just kind of build up around there. And I don't know why this black clay is sticky. And we're gonna smooth that out. I wanna make, that, make sure that is one piece. So just smooth your two pieces together here real nice. And I'm actually gonna put this on one of my mats to help me be able to lift it up much easier. 
And now this is gonna be my tree branch. So now I want tree branches around my entire piece as well. Um, so I'm gonna have a tree branch coming over here because my pendant is gonna, or not my pendant, I'm sorry. My pin is gonna lay like this. So this is gonna be the upper part of it. So now I want a tree branch to kind of come over here because we're gonna have our owl in a tree. So roll your clay out again. And I am keeping these pretty, um, like pretty big noodles. Cause I'm gonna put some designs in them and then I will cut it off about right there. And then I'm gonna kind of make that a little pointy. Now here you can kind of see it's coming loose a little bit. So I know that's not gonna be very secure. So I am gonna put a little bit of my liquid adhesive right there. So here, this is what I'm using. It's called oven baked clay adhesive and it's from Sculpey. Love this stuff. But by putting that there, I know that that is gonna be securely connected now. And I'm not worried about the rest cause it's kind of, it's gonna bind it all together. So it's gonna become one piece, but this part is gonna be um, not covered with the black clay. So I'm gonna leave that area alone. So I wanna make sure it's connected. Now this like here, we're rubbing this all, that's connected. If you're uncertain about it, we could add some extra liquid clay there. So do not put it underneath though, because you don't want to make, um, what do you call it? You don't want to make a mess underneath it and hide because this particular um, agate is see-through. So I don't want anything extra there if I don't have to. And I'm not sure what the liquid uh, um, adhesive is going to do underneath to my stone. So I'm going to stick this all on the side here. Make sure this is 100% connected. And you don't need a lot. So that little bit that I put in there, I'm going to spread it all inside there and then push it up. And then I will clean up my stone. This part is fine, but I'm going to put a little bit extra just in case, because now that I'm kind of playing around with it, I'm kind of questioning whether I should add it or not. So I'm just gonna add it just to be safe. When in doubt, just go the extra step. It's always better to take the extra step than have your piece not securely on there. So there, now we have it securely on there. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna blend and make sure that's blended nicely. And you can see all I'm doing is rubbing my finger and connecting the black and white clay together. That's all I'm doing. So it becomes fully one piece. I get my wipey. I'm gonna clean up all that extra adhesive. So I do not want it on my stone. And as you play, it's gonna move around and you're gonna get more adhesive and that's okay because we'll clean it all up. I want this more um, rounded off. I don't want it into a point. And I absolutely love watching these videos because when I watch these tutorials that I do, it goes from like this scrap piece of clay to these beautiful pieces of art that you could wear. And it's so fun to watch that go into process. Or it's so fun to watch that process. Alrighty. So that's kind of what you have right now. So now take any tool that you have 
it's got to have like a point or something like that. You could do a toothpick, a pointer tool, whatever you have. And now we're going to make marks in our pieces to give us some tree marks. So we want to make it look like um, a tree. So I'm going to kind of just mark it up. So you see how I did like the little knot there. Just give it some detail. You always want detail in your pieces. It just makes your piece come to life. And they're so pretty and beautiful when you put that detail in there. Do the same thing on this one. Now go with the flow. So like this one straight down, this one kind of comes on the curve. So make sure you're going with the direction. So if it's on a curve, kind of put your piece or your lines in a curve as well. You just want to kind of follow suit with your um, design. And that's what we got. This project is so simple. I love creating these easy ones. So now I just want to kind of figure out where exactly I want my little owl. Because like I said, I don't want to cover up all my um, little markings here. Because I really think those are so unique. I like them a lot. All right. So now I'm going to put some adhesive on this guy. This is to make sure he's securely on our, um, our agate. I'm going to bend him down a little bit. Not too much, though. It's amazing what you could do with these little molds, too. I'm going to make sure that he's up above. All right. So now, I love putting extra detail into my little molds here. So now with his wings, you'll see he has like, I don't know, some weird X marks. I don't want the X marks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pointer and I'm going to go like this. And that's going to give me more of like a feather look. And I'm going to make them a little bit deeper. So then you'll have like that little feather look there, okay? Okay. So I'm going to start at the bottom and then work my way up. So you see, now we have that little extra detail in his wing. I'm going to do that to the next one. And I'm going to make little marks going down around his belly as well. And then I'll give his little belly little feather marks as well. Mm, I need. I need, I need. What do I need? Where's my little? All right. So now I'm going to get my dotting tool. And I'm just going to kind of fix the middle of him here to make sure his little feet look like they're properly in the right place. Do the same thing under his chin. Just give him a little bit. And then we're going to do the top of his head as well. Take your time on this. And I don't want his face completely mushed down. So I'm going to kind of lift him back up. Because he was looking like he was distorted. And what I'm going to do to make sure he has that support is I'm going to put a little extra piece of clay there. And just make it look like it's part of my tree. And that way he has a little extra support underneath him. And I'm going to take my tool... And just kind of blend that together. I'm 
and just readjust him because now I'm just kind of distorting him. Putting my little marks in the tree. And I'm real big on detail on my molds. So you'll see me kind of playing around with this for a little for a little bit and that's because I feel like the more detail you put into your pieces it makes it look like you didn't necessarily use a mold I'm just kind of now I'm going to kind of take my tool I'm going to put little deeper marks in here So you see how I'm making a little bit deeper marks there? And that's gonna make my piece a little bit more natural or 3D looking, however you wanna put it. So like that. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I want to distinguish between his one wing. His one wing got flattened a little bit while I pushed him down before. So I'm going to kind of make little marks there to indent them a little bit more. Give it more. There we go. I want to keep that a little bit level and push that underneath him. So it's just a matter of like kind of building him up a little bit to make sure he lays flat on there. But look how cute he looks so far. What I like to also do is get my little fake eyeballs and I'm going to get my real tiny ones. Always like putting the little eyeballs in there. I'm going to get my mica powder first. And I'm going to mica powder my little guy here. And I'm using silver because I love silver on this particular piece. And now you'll be able to really see all the detail that I just put into this guy. I'll get it behind. And I'm actually going to get just a little liquid clay and put it behind his head just to make sure that he's securely on there as well. There we go. All right, so you can see all the detail in this little guy. And now I'm going to take my little fake eyeballs and I am going to trim them down. And I mean, I'm going to trim, trim them down because that clay is not very thick. And then I am going to take my adhesive, put it on there. And then stick it right. It's so hard because it's so tiny at this point. 
I want to stick it. Let me stick the adhesive right on the eyeball. And because it's so small, I'm having a hard time. I'm just going to use my pliers. Take my pliers and hold the eyeball with the pliers and then insert it in to the eye. And then I can push it down. And that makes it so much easier than trying to play around with it. And push them down, but don't push them down too far because the owls have that look of like their eyes kind of um, popping out a bit. I want to clean that up a bit. Alrighty. And we could always clean up all the rest afterwards. But before I put any more mica powder on, because I really just wanted to do the mica powder to show you how cute he was coming out, because sometimes you really can't see the detail when it's black on black, you know. So um, my next thing is I just want to kind of lay a few leaves here and just give it a little bit extra, kind of like he's hiding. I could do that or um, there's a number of different ways we could do it. But I want to keep this simple. So I'm going to lay or I'm going to roll this out to my middle section on my pasta machine. All right. So I have a couple of these little dot tools that I reshaped with just my pliers. So I'm going to take those and my saran wrap and I'm going to just cut out some of those. And I'm going to do two different sizes. I'm going to do a bigger one and some smaller ones. And I'm not going to use that many, but I'm not sure how many I'm going to use. So I like to just punch out a bunch of them at one time. Alrighty, let me separate these. Get your X-Acto knife and just take the back of it and make little leaf marks. So go straight down and then go to the side and just make little leaves. And then you could just take it, point it at the top, and then you have this beautiful leaf. So I'm just going to lay a few here and there on my piece. Just to give it that little extra. I, 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 I cannot express how I really love adding so many little details because... <laughs> Um, it is a little time consuming, but when you see the end results, it really does make that little extra worth it. So you'll see I'm kind of turning this off to the side like that. And then I'll just lay it right here and have it kind of swoop over. So if you don't want to add leaves, you could leave it with just branches. I want you to create this piece to be your piece. Don't ever feel like if you're following any of my tutorials that you have to make it exactly the way that I make something because the fun part about doing art is really creating something 
that you want to create and how you like to do it. And I feel like when you do that, you kind of find your style in between. So you'll see, I will create something and you could change it to your style. I hope that makes sense. So now here I did the same exact thing with this tiny one. And I want to add a few on my owl and I want to add a few on this um, tree branch as well. So to do that, I want to make sure that I use my um, clay adhesive for the simple fact that I ended up putting the mica powder on here. So I'm going to put a couple right on my little owl and I'm just going to put some clay adhesive on here. That will ensure that um, my leaves will stick to my owl over the mica powder. So I don't like his leg here. It just looks wonky to me. So I'm going to add a few over my owl's leg. And then that will cover up my little mistake. Let me put one like that, and then let me pick this one up. Let me put it right, put that one right there. So I love being able to kind of hide your mistakes too. That's always <laughs> so fantastic. So like I kind of messed up his arm a little bit or his wing by kind of mushing him down initially onto the side. So I'm gonna fix, I fixed it the best that I could, but I think his leg and his one wing is a little wonky still. So I'm gonna fix it by adding some leaves to hide that. And you, nobody's even gonna know that that was there. So let me make that into a point. And then I'm gonna add let me, I need a little bit more glue there. I'm gonna add it right to my piece. I'm gonna push it down. So now I got these beautiful leaves right at the top and you're not gonna see his weird looking leg there because <laughs> it's all hidden. So now it looks much, much better. So I think I'll add a couple small ones down at the bottom and then we'll mica powder the whole front. We'll put on um, our back and then we can bake our piece. Oops. I gotta make sure I'm going in the right direction for my leaf. So I almost went upside down. And then decide where I want those ones. We'll put one, I love that little mark there, so I don't wanna hide that. So we'll just put one down here. Put that underneath. And then, Do one tiny one over here. So it looks like I will use almost all the ones that I did, except for that one that I kind of made look yucky. Um, do one more. Right there. All right. So that's what we have. How adorable is that? And so easy. I mean, just so easy. I absolutely love creating these little guys. And I haven't done one of these for probably about three years. So now let me just mica powder the rest of him. 
Oops. Make sure your pieces are completely down. And we are gonna highlight this with black paint afterwards. Pretty sure that's exactly what I'm gonna do because I love highlighting my pieces. But I'm gonna use paint for the highlighting. And another thing I wanna kinda of decide, do I want to just color my leaves? And like a pretty blue, like, uh, or green, like my agate to make the agate itself pop out. So I think I may end up doing that. So while this bakes, that's where I will make all my decisions on how I want to really make this piece pop and bring it to life. And I really feel like this is the first step of doing it by adding the details, but then you gotta decide how exactly are you gonna do that? Are you going to add color to it? Are you not gonna add color to it? So there's a lot of different things that you gotta kind of think about. So here, I wanna make sure I'm blending those two pieces of clay completely together. Otherwise they look separated and then they don't look as nice. And I love making all my pieces look like metal when I'm doing stuff like this. Okay. So I'm gonna... I wanna make sure, I wanna make sure this little piece of clay here is over my agate, just to make it look nice. I don't want it down underneath it. I want it over. So I make sure I'm pushing that piece of clay up. And then go over it. And make sure your owl's ears are still pointy. So I kind of mushed that one down a bit. So I want to redo that. I want to make sure that it's nice and pointy really look over your piece completely before you put it in the oven. Because once it's baked, you're kind of stuck. Now you're going to look over it one more time. Make sure all your little marks on the tree are as deep as you want it to be. Because now moving it around, you kind of um, take away all of that extra um design sometimes so i want to make sure all my little designs are in there so you see how i'm going deeper with that and then i'll just kind of go over it one more time with the mica powder and i'm not worried about going too deep in there because if the black shows i'm okay with that because i'm probably going to put black inside those um areas anyway I just wanna make sure that my marks for my tree are in there. All right, now let's work on the back. And now you wanna be real careful that you're not gonna mush the front. So hold it with just your finger on the agate. Smooth your piece out here. And now we're gonna get our back. So this is the back that I'm gonna use. And you can either do this now, place this on like this, or you could do it after you bake it. Depends on how comfortable you are with not mushing your front. Now I'm comfortable with this because I've done this before, so I'm okay with it. But you got to know, are you gonna mush your clay or not? So just be a little bit you know, cautious with that. I am going to take my clay and kind of measure it out a little bit because I wanna cover this completely with my clay, I'm just gonna get an idea. And I'm gonna make a nice little thing here. 
So I'm thinking I could do a moon right over it because that would look really nice. All right, let me roll this clay out. All right, so now I rolled it out onto my second thickest setting. I'm gonna give it a moon for the back because I think that's gonna look really cute with the owl. Smooth your piece out. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Pick your piece up gently. I am going to lay some, oops. I'm gonna put some clay adhesive on the back. Make sure when you're putting this on, the pin itself is facing down because that's how they're going to lay most likely. So you want to make sure that's laying down. So now I want to see if I could just get my little moon in here and carefully just lay him on here. And you don't have to press hard because the clay is already, it's still soft, you know, it's not baked. So everything will lay there real nice. You just want to take some of this extra clay or extra um, adhesive and kind of wipe it up a bit. My front still looks beautiful. Hold it in place. And now carefully do your mica powder on the back. I am not going to do my moon in silver. I am actually going to do that in gold. So I'm going to carefully lay that down like that. I'm gonna get my gold mica powder. And just go right over. These are like the little details that, you know, I think make the difference on your pieces. So when you add those little extras, I really feel like they make them stand out from other people. All right. Carefully. Make sure I get that silver there. I am going to lift up now you want to make sure let me finish this first before I go on to the next thing because I want to point something out to you. So whatever you put there to close your um, your pin, you want to make sure you're giving it that area to close it all the way. So you see how my moon is there? I am actually going to close this completely while it bakes. That way, that little area is open. So as it bakes, it'll stay open and then my pin will go in and out. Look over your piece. Make sure you did not mush anything because that happens. Make sure your little owl's ears are properly in place. Check for little marks that you may want to add. I'm gonna make a little furry, or not furry, little feather marks here. I want to add little feather marks right up on his little ear area. Right here, I want to add those little feathers that point out. All right, and once again, just go over your piece. Make sure you're not leaving anything out. Just double check everything. I am super happy with this. I think this looks beautiful. I'm very pleased with it. So now I'm going to place this in my oven. 275 
and I'm going to bake it. I'm going to say honestly about 45 minutes because this is pretty thick. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to finish this all up. My piece is out of the oven and look how beautiful this looks so far. Super happy with this. So my next step is to now put in some color to kind of highlight everything. So what I like to do is I, I got my black acrylic paint and some water. And I'm gonna grab some wipes here. And I have like a stiffer brush here. So I like my stiffer ones so I could just kind of pound it into the lines there. So I'm gonna get my water and my black and I'm just gonna kind of mix it up so it's not so thick. I want this to be more watery. And then I'm gonna push it right into those lines and really kind of just detail that. And then I'll just take my wipey and start wiping off. And all that black will stay in the lines. And then you'll still have your beautiful silver, but the lines will be covered in the black. And I like to do the whole piece this way when um, you wipe it off, you still get some of the shadow in and it'll be highlighted as well. And then just wipe. So very, very easy to do this step. And you could use a regular towel. You don't need to use a wipey. I just have a wipey on hand. But you see how the black is staying inside all those little crevices? That's what you want. Because that's going to kind of add some um, detail to your piece. And we want to get the entire thing, including our owl. So you see, I covered that entire piece there. And now I will just wipe off all the extra. And if you want a little bit more in the area, just go right over it. So look how nice that looks. So very, very nice. And in the back, I just like to kind of make sure that I'm shadowing around. So I'll get, I'm not going to go on top of my moon, but I'm going to go around it because that'll give me a little shadowing on the edges there. And you may think, well, why even do the whole piece on the back? Because there are little crevices in there and that black will stay in there and it'll kind of just go with the rest of the piece. This way you don't have this big bright back of the silver. You'll have more of a dollar piece like you do in the front. Now, that's all done. I get his little nose a little clean. Make sure his eyes are nice. Now my next step is, let me kind of rinse that out a little bit. I just want to rinse my brush a little bit. All right. So my next step is to start cleaning up my edges. And I just take any sharp tool that I have and I will get the edges real well. 
and I'm not scratching the stone, if that makes sense. You know, I'm scratching over it, but I'm not digging into my stone. I am just lightly scraping over it to get any extra paint or mica powder or that glue off of the edges because you want to make sure your edges are nice and clean. Now, this is perfect because now I have those little hard edges or areas to get into. I'm just going to take my tool and I'm going to push my wipey right into that. And then I'll clean my edge and my little nooks and crannies real well that I normally wouldn't be able to get off very easy. This tool will help me get right into that. So you see how nice and clean that got and get right into the edge. Cleaning your piece up is going to be important to make it look real nice. Now look at all those pieces here. Look how beautiful that looks. I love that section. And then you can really see all the beautiful green there. All right, and a matter of fact, I think I am going to add a little bit of green to my leaves. Like I said earlier, I was uncertain if I really wanted to, but the more and more I'm looking at it, I think I'm going to because I think that's really going to help pop the piece out just by giving it just a tad bit color. So I'm going to see if I have a green that will match nicely. Let me get that little bit of paint off right there. And I think this one might work well. Yeah, beautiful. I think that's going to match really nice. So in order to do this, I'm going to want to do my black again over my green. But I'm going to have to wait till my green completely dries. So I'm going to go over just very lightly. So whatever color your um, sliced agate is, add in just a tiny bit of that color into your piece, I think is going to really help bring your piece out and bring the color. So I don't have a lot of color in this agate, but by adding the silver, it matches this area beautiful. And then adding the green to the leaves is going to match inside the agate. They are beautiful. And I got a little bit. So when you're doing this area, just be a little bit more cautious than you normally would to make sure that you're not getting the green anywhere else. So you can see if I'm getting anything on my other pieces, so like a couple of them I got on the side, I'm just taking my dry brush here and wiping up that extra paint so I'm not getting it on my tree branches and stuff like that. So look at how much that made it pop. So I'm going to let that completely dry. And when it dries, we'll come back and um, finish this piece up completely. Okay, guys. So here it is. It's all dried. Look how beautiful that looks. That looks so much better than all silver. So now I just want to do a very light, um, very light thing of black. I don't want to do a lot because I don't want to discolor the um the leaves too much so i am just going to go right into this water area soak it up and then go right over my piece with a little bit just a little black just and wipe it right off 
And then you see, now it stays right in there. But we want to just do one wipe. We don't want to keep wiping over and over and over because we just put this paint on. So if we wipe it over and over and over, that paint is going to come off because it's not sealed. So be careful when you are wiping. You wipe it too much, you're going to take that green right off. Get over that silver again. And there, look how beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm super happy with that. Make sure my stone is still clean. So now I'm going to give that probably about five minutes or so to dry. Um, actually, I'm going to dry it with my blow dryer. And then we can just seal it with our sealer and our piece will be completely done. So I'm going to take my blow dryer and I'm going to dry it on my cool setting. As I'm looking, I can see I did brush off a little bit of my green there. So I'm actually going to take my brush here and just dab it just on the tip. And then I'm just going to go right over and I'm not going to go inside those lines. I just want to go over. I just want to go over the areas that I accidentally brushed off. So if you're doing that, just be very careful. Try not to go in where the black is. Just on the outside, because I really want these to be green. So anywhere that I brushed off the silver, I'm just going to kind of go over that. And I think that's the only area that I saw that I brushed off. Maybe add a little bit more right there. All right. Okay, now I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to blow dry it again. Okay, so now I have my gloss glaze from Sculpey. And then I'm going to do the back first. And you don't need a thick coat of this on. Make sure you're getting up and behind your um, owl as well. And then I will carefully get the sides right away. And to make sure my piece stays still, I will hold it. I'm going to carefully go around where my stone is. Try to avoid my stone. If you get it on there, it's okay. I just don't want to clean up more than I need to. So I'm going to try to avoid it. When I go over my eyes, I'm just going to take my finger and wipe off any glaze that I get over the eyes because you don't need it on the eyes. So now I will let this completely dry. And then when it is dry, I will show you what it looks like and we will be completely finished. All right, guys, and here it is. Look how gorgeous this piece came out. I am super pleased with this. I think adding those green leaves really helped bring out the green and the agate, and it just kind of blended so well together. Now, I still have a couple little wet spots here, um, but I really just want to show this to you guys before um, I end my night. And here, look at the back. It's gorgeous. It opens and closes very easily. So just by pushing your pin in like that and then baking it, 
you will have that little opening that you need. So you don't have to avoid that. You just push your pin in, bake it, and it will open and close nicely for you. So let me know if you prefer the color to blend well with your agate stone, or if you like just all silver or gold or, you know, the metal look. Let me know what you prefer. And um, I really hope you guys enjoyed creating this piece with me. If you did, please like, subscribe, share the videos, comment. It really helps. The more I'm out in the YouTube world, the more videos I will create. And I will see you all next time. Bye.